the CFO at uh, the company now joining us. Uh, good morning. Okay, so I'm going through your numbers. So we, as I said, we've seen a quarterly revenue uh, report out that's come in. Margins. Now, this earnings season has been about margins, right? Because of inflationary pressures and how companies have tried to withstand that. Your margins are flat at 11%. With the kind of softness that we started to see for commodities, any guidance you can give the street uh, for Q3, for Q4? Yeah, so in terms of uh, margins, as you would have seen, uh, margins have, while they are flattish, I think uh, towards a positive bias versus 10.4% in the previous quarter, we have delivered 11.1% in the last quarter. And we all know the commodity pressures, be it the electricity prices, be it gas prices, India, overseas. I think there have been a lot of negative impact, but because of the operating leverage and the kind of record revenues uh, we have been able to deliver, we have been able to withstand that pressure of the rising input costs and have been successful in delivering the margins into a stated guidance of 11 plus percent kind of a range. Going forward, uh, as you have asked, we are pretty confident uh, that as the momentum continues, you know very well that 90% of our revenues actually are dependent on our customers, which is the OEMs. So as of now, uh, we all know that there have been a long waiting period for specifically the PV segment. So that sector definitely looks very good and promising. In fact, the last quarter, as you know, uh, as a country, we have uh, done volumes of more than a million uh, cars uh, during the quarter, which was the highest ever. And uh, we believe that with the strong order book pipeline, that uh, trend should continue. And in that momentum, even in the two wheelers have done uh, pretty well in the last quarter. So let's see uh, once the volumes uh, come out for this month, uh, how things are. But as of now, things look much better than what they were the same time of the last year. So we are pretty confident that this momentum of uh, the record revenues, which we have achieved in the last quarter should continue. Uh, obviously, uh, as you rightly mentioned, as I said a little while back, the industry volumes plays a key, but uh, from, from Minda perspective, Uno Minda perspective, uh, we have been very clear that whatever industry grows, we need to grow more than that. So if we see last quarter to uh, this quarter, the industry overall volumes have grown by 12%, but uh, we have grown by uh, 36% in terms of our top line. So that, that clearly demonstrates the kind of uh, delta we have been able to generate, even if one were to exclude the benefit out of the commodity prices in terms of revenue. So we are pretty confident going forward in Q3 and Q4 based on the product uh, order book and the pipeline we have uh, that the trend or the momentum to continue. You know, we're also talking at a time when um, we've seen that better inflation reading that's come in from America and the markets are rejoicing. Um, and there's been so much chatter, soft landing recession, hard landing. That's for Europe, it's for uh, America as well. Your overseas business, how has that been doing? Uh, how are you also reworking your order book? Has it been impacted at all with the headlines that we're getting from overseas? No, absolutely. Uh, there has been some uh, impact in terms of volumes for our exports and the revenues in uh, Europe and America. Uh, overall, it's, it's a very small impact because we have been able to consistently add more and more business. But if you see on the Continuing business, yes, there has been some impact, but specifically talking about uh, the cost pressures, etc. in uh, Europe, yes, uh, there is a significant cost pressure because of the gas prices, electricity prices, and also the inflationary uh, prices, coupled with uh, the volumes uh, continues to be impacted because of uh, the semiconductor shortages in Europe, because we all know that the electronic component in the vehicles in Europe is among the highest. So there still we see some impact because of the semiconductor shortages which are yet to get normalized yes things are much better than what they were but uh, they are not as uh, we would uh, one would have expected with the strong order book there but in terms of asean where we have manufacturing plants in indonesia and vietnam i think things are much better uh, and we have been able to deliver uh, the record pro revenues and uh, performance there as well compared to the the previous quarter so as of now overseas it, it's a little mixed bag from asean perspective things are much better and uh, from europe perspective it, there are uh, some headwinds, but uh, because of our more uh, new business we have been able to generate and also the additional uh, products which we have launched into our German business, uh, we have been able to sort of withstand uh, the headwinds. 
There are plans for a new plant capex of 400 crores over the next five years. And then with Bueller Motor as well, uh, which is the JV in uh, Germany, there is a capex of close to 110 crores that the company plans to undertake. So what is the, uh, the plan to fund this new capex? So as of now, we are pretty uh, well placed in terms of our funding, our debt equity, or the gearing ratio, as you say, it stands very strong at 0.1%. And with uh, excellent uh, free cash flows, if you see in the first quarter, we had free cash flows uh, or the PBDT of almost first half of 600 crores, uh, which was uh, utilized to fund not only the incremental working capital for the kind of revenue growth we have delivered of almost 36%, uh, we have also been able to fund all our capex programs uh, in the first half. So with that kind of uh, strong uh, performance, we are uh, pretty confident that we should be able to fund our capexes primarily from uh, the internal accruals. Yes, there may be some short-term leverage uh, for some timing mismatch, but overall, I would say we are very, very comfortably placed to fund these uh, capex expansion programs. Speaking of the joint venture, just tell us what is the ROI expectation from this joint venture investment and in how many years will you see it flow through? Yeah, so this joint venture, as you have uh, said, uh, this is for manufacturing of EV motors. You know that we have got one of the most formidable product pipeline from the EV products perspective and this uh, motors uh, being added adds uh, to it. We already had a motor controller. So we are pretty confident that as the volumes grow, uh, EV volumes, we all know they are very small as of now, it will roughly around 3% to 4% of the total two-wheeler volumes. So as it grows, definitely uh, our revenue also will grow. Our expectation based on our internal estimate of the volume is that in the next five years, we should be able to do something around 400 to 500 crore kind of a revenue from this uh, joint venture. And in terms of return on capital, uh, our target has always been that in the third year of production, uh, we should have at least 20% uh, pre-tax ROCI. And based on our uh, detailed project report, uh, we are pretty confident that we should be able to achieve those kind of uh, returns. We let you go on that note. Thank you so much, Mr. Bora, for joining in and giving us a view on the overall numbers as well as your uh, CapEx plans going forward. Time to slip into a very quick break. Be right back.